Hello everyone. I am Dr. I M Day, a consultant nephrologist and transplant physician at P D Hinduja Hospital, Mahim, Mumbai. Today, I want to talk on something very relevant, which we find in our day-to-day O P D practice, and I wanted to address this head-on about the prevalent myths and misconceptions about kidney diseases which are there around us. So let us just start by enumerating each and every one of them, and I will try my best to break them or to disembark these myths as we go along. The first myth that we have is that kidney disease is very rare. Unfortunately, there is a growing prevalence of kidney problems in our community. In India alone, it has been seen that almost one in every five person is developing kidney disease as we go along. Not only that, the age of prevalence is also decreasing. Younger and younger patients are having kidney problems. So we have to be aware that there is a kidney disease which is there in this country, especially because we are a diabetes capital of this world, and also there is an increasing prevalence of blood pressure. The second point is one of the myths is that there is nothing that can be done if you get a kidney problem, which this is not true. There are a lot of things that can be done. You can manage your blood pressure. You can maintain an active lifestyle. Avoid smoking or drinking alcohol. Control your diabetes, and so on and so forth. The other myth, which is very prevalent, is where we think that if the kidney problem is there, one kidney is not functioning properly. That is not true. Actually, only when both of your kidneys have started getting affected, more often than not, your kidney problem comes up. So you have to be aware of this myth. The other myth that we have is that you will never get any early symptoms, so you will not know that there is a kidney problem which is there. That is also not true. We are taking it to the other extreme. What happens is there are subtle indications which come up, either a swelling in the legs or puffiness around the eyes or increasing urination at night. These could be some of the early indicators that you are starting to have some kidney problems. It is best to consult with your family physician for the same. Also, we have noticed uh, that patients feel that any time you have swelling in the feet is synonymous. This always means a kidney problem. While it is true in many cases, there are also many other causes, and you should be aware of these. Sometimes varicose veins or unilateral only one leg swelling could be a cause of other problems as well. So it is not synonymous. However, if you have a swelling in the feet, you should not disregard it and get it checked thoroughly. The other prevalent uh, problem is uh, the myth that we see very often is patients come and say that oh we have been diagnosed with kidney disease or we know someone who has a kidney problem and we have we are now very vigilant and we are drinking almost four to five liters of water in a day. That also is kind of a misconception. Yes, you need to stay hydrated. You need to let your thirst determine how much water you should take. You should be aware that you should take enough water so that you are peeing okay, so that you do not feel thirsty. But going overboard with your water intake can, in some cases, especially in the elderly, be detrimental. So you have to be careful. Another thing that we notice is uh, patients say that any back pain relates to kidney problems. Yes, there are certain conditions. If you have kidney stones, you might have back pain. But it is not synonymous with kidneys. There are so many other causes. There could be spine issues. There could be musculoskeletal problems, and so on and so forth. So while you have a back pain, make sure that you see someone and you get that evaluated if it's very concerning. Again, a lot of my patients who come in the OPD, they feel that they will know when they have a problem. So they intuitively adjust their medications based on that. Taking this forward, a lot of my patients say, "Oh, we are urinating okay. Uh, our urine flow is good, so we do not have any kidney problem." That again is a misconception. If you are at risk, if you are, if your age is more than sixty, if you have diabetes or blood pressure, if you are a smoker, if you have had kidney stones in the past, or if any doctor at any point has told you that you have had some amount of kidney problems, beware. If you are at risk, it is not. Always mandatory that your urine output will be affected, or the flow of your urine won't be okay, and only then you have a kidney disease. Remember, if we check it or assess it early, then the kidney problem can be tackled head-on, and we can retard the progression of the kidney disease. So you should be very vigilant about it. 
The other thing that is important to know is a lot of my patients taking this forward say, Doc, we can understand when our blood pressure shoots up or our diabetes is playing uh, havoc. So we can sense that our blood sugars are high or our blood pressures are high and that's how we manage our medications. In fact, you will be surprised there was a survey done and almost one third of the patients adjust or stop their medicines depending on how they feel. This could be in the short term may not, you may not realize what it is doing to your body, but in the long term it will have severe health implications. So once you have been diagnosed with diabetes or blood pressure or any other problem, please take a detailed uh, analysis with your primary physician and run it by them before you change or stop any of the medicines. So, uh, the other misconception is that, oh doc, you have told us so many things, but I'm sure if I want to know what kind of kidney problem I have, it's surely a very lengthy process, it's a very costly affair, and a lot of uh, complicated investigations will be done. That's not true. Just getting a serum creatinine, a blood test to know what your kidney function is, and a urine report, a urine routine report would be enough to guide your family physician or your kidney specialist to give a sense of where your kidney problem is heading. So you should be careful and you should be vigilant about this and get your tests done regularly, especially if you are at risk, as I mentioned. One of the other myths, which is very, very prevalent is, is that in the era of social media and in the era of an abundance of knowledge, uh, at the click of a button. We do find a lot of our patients coming and telling us that doc, once we have known that our relative or we are suffering from kidney problems, uh, we have tried some special concoctions or there are some advertisements about something which can help the kidney. I would strongly recommend in my own humble small way to run it by your doctor, if possible by your nephrologist before you venture into these, uh, these concoctions or special remedies. Because if they are scientifically proven, then yes, your doctor themselves will recommend this. But if not, remember these things could be counterproductive to you too. Taking the diet uh, advice and the diet myths forward, there are a couple of things which are very important. Remember, if you are not taking extra salt in your diet, which means that on the table, you are not putting in extra salt, does not always mean that your salt intake is adequate. You must be knowing that high salt intake is linked to high blood pressure. But you will be surprised to know that how many hidden sources of salt exist, especially in the supermarkets when you go. The junk food, the processed food has a lot of salt in it. Also, I have seen a few of my patients come to me with the myth or misconception, oh doc, we have kidney problem. So what we will do is we will not take the normal salt. We will take some special sea salt or salt substitutes. While in the early stages of kidney disease, that might not be a real problem. But as the kidney disease progresses, these salt substitutes contain potassium in them and they might be detrimental to you. It is always advisable to take your health practitioner or your doctor's advice before you try any of these things. The other thing related to diet is, uh, once you develop a kidney problem, there is a very, very strong prevalent myth that you have to stop all kinds of protein. Yes, when you develop a kidney problem, the protein has to be restricted. But remember in the Indian diet, especially in the Indian vegetarian diet regime, our protein intake is not to that extent that we need to start cutting down drastically on the protein. In fact, if you take less and less protein, it might be counterproductive. You might lose your muscle mass and you might get weaker and weaker and immunity might suffer. So it is a good idea if you have a kidney problem and your nephrologist is on board taking care of it, you can get a diet chart by a registered dietitian or run it by your nephrologist. Remember, yes, there are some restrictions which we need to be done. If you are a non-vegetarian and an avid non-veg eater, we might ask you to cut your uh, non-veg portions. But in the vegetarian diet, there is very little scope to drastically or half the uh, amount of protein that you are taking. Another couple of myths before I end my session. One is, if I have a kidney problem, it is a hereditary problem and it will be passed on from generation to generation. There are a very few subsets or kinds of kidney diseases which are indeed hereditary. 
But all said and done, most of these kidney issues can be tackled by lifestyle changes. Your diabetes can, can also be hereditary in certain cases, so that might contribute. But as a general rule of thumb, kidney diseases are not passed on from generation to generation. So that myth needs to be broken. Kidney disease progression is inevitable in a subset of patients. But that does not mean that every patient whose creatinine has risen a bit is going to land upon dialysis. This is another myth which I see. Patients feel that they are helpless and once the creatinine has started rising, it is eventually going to progress at a rapid stage. Every person is different. Every patient is different. Based on your inputs and based on your willpower, along with a close follow-up with your nephrologist, the chances that you will land upon dialysis or needing a transplant can be delayed or you might not need it at all. This is where a close follow-up with your nephrologist becomes important. Finally, the most important thing. For my existing kidney disease patients, I, this is a, an, a kind of a message to you and to break this myth that if you land upon dialysis, if the kidney disease does lead to you to a stage where the chronic kidney disease is heading towards dialysis, please do not think that this is the end of life. A lot of our patients are on dialysis, they do well. A lot of them undergo kidney transplantation and they are living a very fruitful, good quality of life. In the 21st century, renal replacement therapy has advanced and if you are indeed a candidate who is heading towards dialysis, your nephrologist, your dietitian, your cardiologist, your entire healthcare team is there with you to guide you on this journey. So to wrap it up, um, I have tried to address quite a few of the common myths and misconceptions which are there. I'm sure you would be having a lot of questions. So you should get in touch with your healthcare professional with your nephrologist for further guidance. Remember, as a take home message, if you are at risk, like your age is more than 60 or you have had kidney stones in the past or you have diabetes or blood pressure or are a smoker then you fall in the high risk category then you should get yourself evaluated by simple tests as i have enumerated in this video once that is done you should keep a regular follow-up with your nephrologist and they will guide you as to what is to be done in the future thank you